purpose of this video is to go through uh, the first part of the following paper from global to local an index bound for umbilic points on smooth convex surfaces by myself and Wilhelm Klingenberg um, which was recently posted on the archive. Now the statement of the main result is as follows that the index of an isolated umbilic point on a C3 plus alpha smooth convex surface in Euclidean 3 space is less than 2. Here C3 plus alpha is holder, but let's just talk about the smooth case. C3 plus alpha is not quite so important. Okay, so the idea of this video will be to go through uh, just the meaning of that statement, rather than the proof per se. And so what we're looking at is we're starting out in Euclidean 3 space, and we're looking at a surface. So let's, let's have a surface like this. Um, now, if it's a graph over the base, you can look at the first derivative of that function, and you'll get the tangent space at a point. And how the tangent spaces change from point to point is determined by the second derivatives in the form of a matrix, a symmetric 2 by 2 matrix called the second fundamental form. Second fundamental form. And because it's symmetric, uh, it's diagonalizable and it has two eigenvalues in general, lambda 1 and lambda 2, referred to classically as the uh, principal curvatures. And when we say convex, we mean that lambda 1 times lambda 2 is the Gauss curvature is greater than 0. Okay, so aside from the principal curvatures, you also have um, the eigen, uh, eigen uh, directions, the eigenvectors, of the uh, second fundamental form, and these uh, give rise to the principal foliation. In fact, it's a pair of foliations. So, a pair of principal foliations. And um, let's note that lambda 1 equal to lambda 2, if the two eigenvalues are equal to each other, then in fact we have an umbilic point. So this is what we mean by umbilic point. It means that it looks a bit like a sphere at that point. Okay, so notice that the umbilic points are the place where there's a kind of degeneracy in the eigen distribution. So in fact, what you have here is that it's also a uh, singularity of the principal foliation. Of the principal foliations. Okay. So we'll come back to that in a second. The other thing that often turns up in this setting will be to look at what's called a support function. The support function is as follows. If you take in the oriented normal line, just the normal line is good enough, to the surface at a point, and you look at the point where it's closest to the origin, uh, well, the distance between these two is what's called or the support function. So your support function um, in general, it will be a function or now it will depend upon where you are on the surface and in fact your surface because it's convex can be parameterized by the direction of the normal to it. So the direction of the normal is an element of S2. So in fact your support function is a map from S2 to or. Um, in fact, if you give me uh, the support function, you can reconstruct uh, explicitly the surface uh, generally we call the surface S in or 3. Okay, so let's come back to this issue here with the singularity of the principal foliation. So if you have a, uh, the principal foliation and you have an umbilic point, so you have a surface here, and suppose you have an, um, an isolated umbilic, so you have some umbilic point. Uh, around it, your principal foliation may look in different ways. It could look like this. It's what's called an elliptic sector. It's what's referred to as a hyperbolic sector. Maybe another elliptic sector. Maybe another hyperbolic sector. And uh, there, because of that, the fact that we have the singularity of a foliation, this, we have a well-defined index. So that's the point P. The index of P, of an isolated umbilic point, is this winding number of this foliation. Winding number of the principal foliation. About that point. Um, now, some simple formula, for example, if you can, this, these are elliptic sectors and these are uh, hyperbolic sectors, um, well then this index is, can be given by the following uh, 
well-known classical formula. Uh, notice here that this is an element of z over 2. It's a half integer because your foliation may not, in fact, be uh, orientable, as we will see. Um, one other thing is that if you look kind of globally, so suppose you have a surface that's closed, suppose you have a closed convex surface, um, and you have isolated umbilic points everywhere. Uh, let's call them PJ. Well, then the sum over all of these, over these umbilic points, of these indices will be the order characteristic of your surface, which is 2. So they will, in fact, all add up to 2. And, in fact, this 2 is the, somehow, the watershed number and our main theorem is that you must have this index less than 2 at each point. Okay, so with that, let's just look at a few examples um, that may illustrate all of this. Um, let's look at the sphere. So the sphere uh, is umbilic everywhere. It's totally umbilic. Every point, uh, is, the eigenvalues are equal, and it's 1 over the radius of the sphere. So if we look at a cylinder, we see the curvature is flat in one direction, and it's it curved in another, and in fact, it has no umbilic points. And once again, if you take that and you rotate it into a circle, bend around in a circle, you look at a torus, um, again, you can do that. You get no umbilic points. Uh, the curvatures uh, are never equal to each other, and they're given there in terms of the angles in the torus. Okay, so what about isolated umbilic points? Well, in fact, here we have probably a more pertinent example, which is the triaxial ellipsoid, uh, given my simple quadratic formula. Um, and what, what's, what's found, what you find is that there are, in fact, four umbilic points. There's an umbilic point here, here, underneath, underneath. Um, if you make the two, uh, two of the constants equal to each other, you get the rotationally symmetric uh, ellipsoid, which has a single uh, umbilic point on the top and a single one on the bottom. Okay, so looking at these, the indices are easily calculated. This would be a half, a half, one half, one half, again, adding up to two, one and one, adding up to two. Um, let me just look at that last one. So, in some sense, these index one half are uh, kind of a common one. So, they would look something like that as we saw just there. That would be the principal foliation with your index a half. Now, the other form, not there, it's index minus a half. And how, what would they look like? Well, if you look at Ben Dixon's formula there for index, what you end up with is essentially three. Uh, hyperbolic sectors and no elliptic sectors. So this is kind of the simplest kind of uh, index minus a half for reasons that, um, that come from complex geometry. We sometimes refer to these as hyperbolic umbilic points. Okay, so they play a, a very special role in our paper. So in fact, uh, let's let's just have a quick look at a surface that has uh, them has an isolated hyperbolic umbilic point, and this is the surface here. Um, it's rather rudimentarily drawn. In fact, these lines here are not the lines of curvature, just to be clear. These are just actually the inverse image of the gas map, uh, parameterized the constant uh, uh, radius and constant angle. But you can see it's got a kind of a threefold uh, kind of a, a thing uh, form there. And the to describe this surface, as we said, a support function is certainly good enough. So let's take Let's show you that this is rather easily constructed. So if you take uh, R from S2 to, to R, um, and in fact, let's take, um, let's take a small amount. Let's, let's take uh, C. Let's just take C. So take a coordinate chart given by stereographic projection. So on our coordinates, say, we call it Xi. And this will go to a function then of Bar. So the function in particular uh, that gives you this surface is uh, two thirds cubed plus bar cubed. So this is your support function. Now it's easily seen that this has uh, an isolated construct the surface. It has an isolated umbilic point uh, at the origin at zero, and uh, and its index index of plus point zero is minus a half as claimed. So this is a, an example of a hyperbolic 
um, uh, umbilic point. Okay, so that more or less explains uh, the, the, the words that appear in the main theorem, and in the next video we'll go on to talk about the reformulation in terms of the space of oriented lines.